Happy Monday morning, everyone. Today is August the 22nd, and this is your two-minute thought with your boy, John Redman. Y'all, today's topic is zoophilist. I'm like, what? Are you speaking in tongues? <laughs> Y'all, what's a zoophilist? The zoophilist is one of the many words that describes people's love for animals way more than humans. Other words are like a pet lover or a pet person, friend of animals or friend to animals, but it's a zoophilist. And of course we, we love our animals, right? There's so many reasons why we love our animals. They provide unconditional love. They don't judge you. They aren't always asking for something. They appreciate attention. They, they calm us down when we feel chaotic. They are loyal. Uh, they're soft. They're protective. They hear way better than we do. And guess what? You can feed them the same thing, the same meal every single day. And they don't complain. We love our animals. Several reasons, several reasons why we love our animals. However, there's a problem in our, in our society. We love our animals more than we love human beings, our fellow brothers. We would adopt a dog before we adopt a, an orphan. That's where we are. And I get it. For those who are in the world, you have no other idea, no other compass. I get it. I understand why you do what you do. But for those in the church, where should our mentality be? What should be our take on animals? See, we understand in the Bible, animals have their place. Animals have their purpose. They were, they were used in the Bible for specific points and for food and sacrifices and for lessons and to work. But as Christians, our take should be different. Way different. The Bible talks about how animals appeared in the Bible. But they were there for a purpose and for a reason. Uh, remember Balaam and the donkey? He had to convey a message. The donkey had to convey a message to Balaam. <laughs> He's like, well, first of all, why are you hitting me? Then there was a story about Samson and the foxtails. Y'all need to check that out. How Samson tied the foxtails together and put a torch in between these foxtails and had them run, lit the torches on fire and ran through crops to make the enemy believe that there was an army coming for them? Mmm, these animals had a purpose. What about Jesus and the donkey? Jesus rode on a donkey. There was a purpose for these animals. Uh, what about Paul? And when he got bit by that serpent, by that viper. Oh my goodness, uh, so many stories. Oh, I love this one, Noah and the raven and the dove. Remember when, when, when the flood came and, and they were floating in on the boat and they sent out a raven to see if, if there was any land and if it didn't come back, then it was like, oh, guess what? We can actually land, but uh, we can, have, there's actually, you know, the water's about to subside or whatever um, because the raven didn't come back or the dove didn't come back. But there, all these animals were used for a specific purpose. Child, like, they weren't put above humans. But look what we've done as a society. It's just the craziest thing. Have y'all seen the headlines in the past? And I'm sure there's some headlines in the present right now. Woman leaves $13 million fortune to her pet cat, Tommaso. What? Khan the chimp was left $80 million by his former owner. What? Gunther IV, a German shepherd, <laughs> inherited $372 million from his father, Gunther III, who was the beloved companion of an eccentric German countess. You left all that money to a, an animal? No people. An animal. We ain't no better church. What is wrong with us, y'all? 
Do you know that we have superiority as mankind? The Bible says in Genesis 1, 26, look what he said. This is why we have superiority. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along, um, among the ground, along the ground, the serpents and the snakes. We have dominion over, we are superior to animals. Why? Because God blew into us the breath of life. We have the spirit of God, the breath of God within us, not animals. They don't. They were spoken into creation. And it was good. But God knelt down and blew his breath into us and made us living creatures. Yes, so God clearly says from creation that people, male and female, are superior to animals. Man is way more valuable to God than animals. God authorized man to kill animals even for food. But we are not authorized to kill people for food. Jeffrey Dahmer. God himself used animal skins to make clothing for Adam and Eve. Numerous scriptures show people owning and herding animals and using them for their own purpose and prosperity. Remember the story of Job. Look at his livestock. Even more important, the Bible clearly teaches that men were created in the image of God. This is not said of animals. Men have spirits that are responsible to study God's word and obey it. The spirit of man goes upward, but the spirit of a beast goes down to the earth. There is a sense in which an animal has a spirit, an animal life, but it does not come or does not continue past death. All dogs go to heaven. No, they don't. Now, there are animals in heaven. The Bible talks about the lion's going to lay down with the lamb and, and children will be able to play with vipers and won't be afraid or won't be at risk, won't be scared because they won't even bite them because we're talking about the new heaven and the new earth and we're talking about what's going to happen up there. But these dogs ain't going up there full of sin. <laughs> Men will be judged for their lives, good or bad, and will re receive eternal rewards accordingly. But animals do not have this moral responsibility. But finally, the most important proof that Jesus died to save all mankind, human beings, not animals. Remember, animals were sacrificed, but it was a symbol. Sacrificing that lamb, sacrificing that sheep, it was a symbol of what was to come. Jesus sacrificed for us. He was God's perfect lamb. If God values animals as equally important to man, why did Jesus not die for them? The answer is obvious. Animals have no spirit, no moral responsibility, no eternal destiny, and therefore they are not held accountable for right or wrong. Jesus did not die to save them because they did not need to be saved. We did. The Bible says all have sinned and, and come short of the glory of God. So said all that to say, let's put these animals back in their rightful place. Luke 12, 24 says, consider the ravens. Check them out. They're beautiful. They don't sow or reap. They ain't even got to work. They have no storeroom or barn. They have no savings account. <laughs> Yet God feeds them because he loves them. He created them. But then check out this perspective in this relational point and this value system and how much more valuable you are than those birds. Y'all love each other. Love God the way he loves you unconditionally. 
and let's keep our love for our animals in its place.